Hello and welcome back to my channel Lady T. Today I'm going to do another book review for you about the book The Boy on the Wooden Box. So grab yourself something nice to drink and we're going to get started. So like I said, we're going to, I'm going to tell you about the book uh, The Boy on the Wooden Box. I constantly have to look because I keep forgetting. Because it has a lot to do with the movie called Schindler's List. Uh, until then, the writer, Leon Lason, who is actually the boy on the wooden box himself. Yeah, I guess he didn't really want to talk about his experience experiences because he thought that no one would be interested to hear his story. But after that movie came out, he decided to write a book. He sadly passed away in 2013. But we have his memoirs to keep reading about everything that he went through as a Jewish kid in World War II. And normally I don't really read his stories because, I don't know, I'm war is something that I have never experienced myself, thankfully. But we in school we have been taught about World War I and the Second World War, so many times and we have had experience we went to Auschwitz with school and we had conversations with elderly people who talked about their experiences in the war that the only thing I can say is that we are very fortunate that we have not yet experienced such a tragedy ourselves here in the Netherlands at least my generation hasn't and to read about to read about it in books from personal experiences is just so powerful because you can't imagine what those people went through even when you read it you still can't really fathom it because you have no idea what it feels like until you have been in that particular situation and this book Leon was such a good writer um, even though you know that he survived because you you read his memoirs and you know that he died in 2013 in the United States of America so you know that he's going to survive this story but every time that one of the commanders of the German army one of the Nazis came to check on him and his family or when they knocked on the door or where they when they came to the factory that he worked at I just could feel this tension like, oh, I hope nothing bad is going to happen to him. And I was really frightened for his life because if you have heard many stories or at least some stories of World War II and if you have watched some documentaries, then you will know that there was a lot of gruesome stuff going on at the war. Things you don't want to think about in your day-to-day -day life. So... I was very very scared for him and the way he describes losing sight of his brother of his older brother of multiple of his older brothers I think it was two or three in the book and of his father at some point how frightened he was as a child because you have no idea what's going on but at the same time you have to focus on yourself and focus on surviving when you're not getting any food and not real great housing and people around you left and right are dying and for no reason there are these people that just hate you for believing in something or having a certain religion without really getting into it it is kind of the same thing that we are doing to muslims right now but i'm not going get to get into that because that's a whole other discussion for another video but even now, I still have a hard time controlling my emotions. It was a really powerful book. Not just because it, the story itself truly happened, but because he manages as a writer to really make you experience what he went through. You don't really need his... Well, you do need his words, but it's just the situation that he paints. It becomes so vivid that... I don't know. You really have to read it yourself. You really do. It is very powerful, very emotional, and it gives you a glimpse of what life is about when you're 
when there's a certain group of people who just don't like you and shut you out and just treat you like rats because of who you are and not because you've done something wrong but because you exist that was the main point of yeah so let me look at the list of what i was actually going to say because now i'm just rambling on thank god that there were people like schindler who understood that even though they were Ger- he was german himself he understood that what his people were doing to the jewish people that it wasn't right that he that it shouldn't happen that they were just human beings just like the germans were so he decided to in his own way stand up and make sure that he his employees were safe at least most of his employees made it i don't think every single one did because at some point at the end of the book spoilers they there were he was able to keep some of his employees but employees but not all of them so leon and his mother and sister i believe just barely made it onto the list or he wasn't on the list but eventually he was something like that and schindler really saved him and helped him and he gave extra food to his employees and it's great men like that that really determined the faith of so many people and the future of so many people in the war of just a small pack of people and if we have people like that standing up these days then maybe we can create a better world right now one thing that i have seen many times in different documentaries with very differing subjects but what really struck me and really annoyed me at the end of the book was that leon talked about a situation where he was talking to an american neighbor who to whom he tried to explain like we had no food in the war but he literally meant no food there was nothing like you were happy if you could get a potato one potato for your whole family for a few days and that neighbor that american neighbor was saying yeah it was hard for us too because we couldn't get everything we wanted either because you had the of course the tickets with, with which you could get food but you couldn't get just go to the store and be like i need free loaves you 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 were rationed so that's me just i understand that in different situations uh different things can be bad like to leon it was if he had been in that situation then that would would have been the worst thing that happened to him so i understand that it depends on your situation what is the worst thing that happened to you but it just puts it in perspective that things that we think are bad or that we get annoyed by because we feel like we are entitled to something and we don't get it then we should be happy that we at least get something or that at least we have the opportunity to do this or that while others in other countries or people who are less fortunate than us just don't have the opportunity to even scratch the surface of what we've got so that really this book really puts put things in perspective even with just that small paragraph in the whole entire book and at the end he had pictures of himself growing up and of his brothers too of him graduating he did really well in america and he showed pictures of his family i have them right here i don't think i can show you due to copyright but i know that that was so powerful to just see that and the list at the end of the book the actual photograph of the list um after reading everything it was very clever to put it at the end because it's nice seeing a face with from the person who actually went through all this so yeah i definitely recommend reading this story it was fantastic even now i've read it one or two months ago and i'm still getting teary-eyed so if you do if you want to read more about the second world war but from a more personal perspective i definitely recommend this book so 
yeah. I hope you enjoyed this book review. Uh, next Sunday there's going to be another tea time video. I'm not sure yeah what the book is going what the book what the video is going to be about, but I hope to see you then and for now I hope you will have a great weekend. Goodbye. Thank you.